Hello, guys and gals. I'm back! Yeah, I've decided I'm going to come back and do some more tutorials for you guys. Um, the reason for the change of mind, before everybody asks, is I was at an event this week um, for game devs in Manchester in England, and I, I met more people there than I thought I would um, that watch my videos, and it became apparent that a lot of people do appreciate the work that I'm doing. Um, it's one thing reading it online, it's another thing having groups of people approach you in real life. It was a little bit creepy, but you know, it was fine. They offered me a drink. I declined, I was polite. Next time I'll say yes. Um, but there you go, uh, I'm back. Woohoo! Yay! In today's video we're going to be covering how we can create um, a blend between textures in real time just so that we can change textures on an object or character, um, you know, as the game is played. Let's just jump straight into it now that that awkward little intro is done, because I'm back two months, two months away, if you miss me. Right click, new material, and we're going to call this, ooh, texture change underscore M. You better have missed me. I missed you. Now what we're going to do first is we're going <laughs> to... We're going to hold three, left click for a three vector, and we're going to plug this into base color. Now, a three vector is a color value of R, G, and B, and we're just going to set this to a gray. Now, the reason we're going to be using gray is because it will have a slightly nicer silhouette than pure white or pure black, because we're going to be able to see some of the finer details. It doesn't really matter in this example, but you know, it's just a habit. Next, we're going to hold T and left click for a texture sample. And we're going to plug this into normal. We will get an error here because there's nothing plugged in. See, missing input texture. Oh no. But that doesn't matter because we're about to fix it. So you can see here on the left hand side, we have texture, none in this big red box, and none in the drop down. If you have a texture in your content that you'd want to use here, go ahead and drag that into here or use the drop down to find it. Or if you're just following along, I'm going to be using T brick clay beveled N. Ta da! We'll hit apply, and then we will close this down, and we have our material. Woo! Or do we? No, we don't. We're going to open this back up, because this alone isn't going to allow us to change anything. To change things in runtime, we're going to need to have something called a parameter. We'll right-click the texture sample, convert to parameter, and we're going to call this normal, because that's our normal map. That's all. We'll hit apply again, and then we're going to close that down. Right click in empty space, blueprint class, actor, texture, bleh, change underscore BP. Open this guy up, click add component. We're going to give this a sphere. And now over here, you can see we've got materials. You can use the drop down to find your material or just drag it in to the green box and it will update our sphere. Yay. There we are. What I mean about these details on off-white, it just looks so much better. Head into the event graph. We don't want overlap and we don't want tick, but we are going to be using a begin play here. On the left-hand side, under our components, we have our sphere. Drag this guy into the event graph from sphere, drag off, and we want to create a dynamic material instance. Now what this does is it creates us a new copy of a material in runtime and it's dynamic which allows us to mess around with the parameters that we created earlier. We're going to either use the drop down to select our material or we can drag it in same as we did before. You're not going to get a green box but it will work. You can see here it's changed this over. From sphere we're going to drag out again and this time we're going to set material because without setting the material the sphere is just going to be using the base material that we've already applied and plug the return value into material. There we have it. Now the other thing that we're gonna do, um, just in this example, because obviously you can make this happen however you want, make some logic, do it so that if you walk up some stairs, the ceiling changes to a fish, I don't know. Um, but I'm just gonna be doing it so that we can left click and then some bricks will change. Um, so we're gonna drag out from the end of set material and we're gonna enable input because I want our player controller to be able to make this work. We need a player controller so right click get player controller and this allows the blueprint to know which player because if there's more than one player it needs to know who can control this. 
Next thing we're going to do is we're going to give a uh, an actual command here. I'm going to be using left mouse button. So when we left click, we're going to do a thing. What we're going to do is we're going to use a flip flop from pressed. Oop, flip flop. Now what flip flop will do is when left mouse button is pressed, it will execute A. The next time it is pressed, it will execute B. So if it executes A, what we want to do is we want it to change check. We want it to change the texture. So from our create material, create dynamic material instance. I forgot to put my teeth in today. From create dynamic material instance, drag out from the return value, set texture parameter value. We're going to plug A in here, and our value is going to be whatever we want to change it to. We don't want it to be the one that we've originally used, which is brick clay beveled N. I'm going to scroll down to brick hewn stone, which is like a nicer rounded stone. It'll be really obvious that we're, uh, we've changed it shortly. And now we want a, another one, and we want to plug B into this one. And target obviously goes into our Great Dynamic Material instance, so we know which material it's changing. The only thing we have to do now is make sure that we change the hewn stone to our default on the B. So the second time it will go back to what it used to be. And our parameter name, we have to change this from none to normal on both of these guys. So it knows which parameter it's changing. We press compile, close it down, drag a blueprint into the level, press play and click. It changes our texture. Yay! Nice. But what if we want that to be a smooth transition because that's a bit jarring? Well, quite a simple change. We're going to right click and duplicate the material, right click and duplicate the blueprint. Rename these if you want. I'm just going to leave them with a one on the end because and messy, no, just because I don't need to. I'll remember, don't worry. We don't need the parameter anymore. What we will need is two textures, so hold down T and left click for both. Or left click twice. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna give the first one, one of our lovely, lovely things, even stone. We'll give the second one, uh, beveled, normal, and then what we're going to do is we're going to be using a lerp node to blend between the two. A lerp will take two values, one in A and one in B, and then we can use a float value to blend between the two. So hold L, left click, and we get a lerp. Plug one into A, one into B, and if we plug this into normal, if I plug that in, then we'll be able to see, right now we've got a default value of 0 0.5. You can see we've got a 0 0.5 blend here. You can see we've got square bricks but you can also see these circle ones in there there we are so how do we change this in in runtime same kind of way that we did the other one we need a parameter but this time we need a scalar so hold s and left click and now what we will do is we'll name this blend plug this into the alpha we'll leave it as zero for now and that will just show one texture here we go we've just got the circle bricks or circle stones Apply this, close this down, open up our new blueprint as well. Make sure in the dynamic material instance we add the new material rather than the old one. Get rid of the set texture parameter values. Instead, what we're going to do is set scalar parameter value. Blend is what we have called it. Now we don't want to just plug this directly in because we don't want to just flick between 0 and 1. That would be the same as what we just made. Um, so what we're going to do is from our A on flip-flop, we're going to timeline, plug update into the scalar parameter value, double click the timeline to open it, up at the top, add a float track, our length, change this to whatever you want. I'm going to use one second because I want this to be quite a quick transition. If you want it to be slow, give it more time. Right click, add a float curve. Zero time, zero value, which means that at the start of the animation, we're going to have our first uh, texture. And then one is the end of my timeline, and then value of one. You have to, well, you don't have to have a value of one, but you're going between zero and one. So if you go beyond one, you're not going to get any difference. <clears throat> then what we're going to do is we're going to plug our new track zero into the value of the scalar parameter set. And 
leave A in play and we'll put B in reverse. Don't use play from start, don't use reverse from end because that's going to always flick to the beginning or end of the blend and then blend it backwards or forwards. We want it to be able to happen wherever it's already blended to. So if it's 0 0.7 and it's going up and we click, it will go down from 0 0.7 rather than from 1. Compile. That's a mouthful, wasn't it? Let's uh, delete this guy and then take out our new blueprint. Oh gosh. Oh golly. Pick him up. Now if we left click, you can see we get this nice blend. So there you go, there you have it. Two really simple ways to change a texture on an object in real time. Now, it's super warm and I have my windows closed because there are kids screaming outside and I have my fans off so that you guys can't hear them. And I'm really warm. And nobody give me this, oh, it's not that warm in England compared to other places. England, right? Uh, houses aren't built for this. We don't have air conditioning or anything. And all of our windows are double glazed. So it is warm. You can't escape it in England. There's nowhere to hide from the hot. We just suffer and complain about it. Anyway, I'm going to go chill. See you guys next time.